when computing limits at infinity, we can use all our limit rules as long as the limit exists and in particular if the limits are finite. In this video we will encounter a few rather innocent limits, but we will also see some examples of limits at infinity where we need to be a bit more careful. So let's start with the limit uh, of x to infinity f of x equals 1 over x to the power r. Well, then we have to distinguish three equations, r bigger than zero, r equals zero, and r smaller than zero. If r is bigger than zero, uh, we can take the limit inside. Uh, so we get the uh, limit x to infinity of 1 over x to the power r, limit x to the uh, infinity of 1 over x, we saw that one already, equals zero to the power r, where r is some positive power, zero to some positive power equals zero. Then, second case, r equals zero. Well, that's an easy one. Then we have 1 over x to the power zero equals one. So limit x to infinity of the function one is just one. And then, finally, r negative. There we have to be slightly more careful. 1 over x to the power r uh, if, if, uh, uh, equals uh, x to the power minus r. Well, r is now negative, so that's limit x to the power uh, r absolute value, because r is negative, so minus r is the same as the absolute value of r. And then we have limit x to infinity of x to some positive power, and that will blow up so that limit equals infinity. Let's continue with uh, the exponential function. Limit x to infinity of the exponential function, well, you know, the graph of the exponential function becomes very large if x goes to infinity, exponentially large. Uh, if you want to show that a bit more from first principles, you can use that e to the power x is bigger than 1 plus x for positive values of x. Uh, a right hand side blows up if x goes to infinity, so does the left hand side because that one is even bigger. So exponential function blows up if x goes to infinity. But what happens on the other hand with the exponential function if x goes to minus infinity? Well, uh, then we can substitute uh, u equals minus x, so we get uh, u to infinity of e to the power minus u. e to the power minus u equals 1 over e to the power u. So we have u to infinity 1 over e to the power u. Uh, well, e to the power u goes to infinity if x goes to infinity, so we get a 1 over infinity equals 0, which corresponds to your notion of the graph of the exponential function. Uh, it goes to the uh, tail for x to minus uh, goes to minus infinity goes to 0. Uh, now, we did take one which is a bit more nasty. x going to 0 uh, uh, from the uh, negative side of e to the power 1 over x. Oh, now, now we have to pay a bit more attention. We can take uh, then t equals 1 over x, then we get the e to the power t, and we go to 0 from the minus side, which means that t goes to minus infinity. So it means that we are back in the c case, and we know that that equals 0. So, enough about the exponential function. Let's look at the limit, which looks, well, really nasty. This quotient over here with all kinds of x's everywhere. Actually, this type of limit is not so difficult. What we do is that we divide the numerator and denominator by the highest power available, which is in this case x squared. So we divide numerator and denominator both by x squared. So what do we get? The 3x squared yields the 3, and the 5x squared yields the 5. And the other terms uh, are all uh, factors of 2 over x and 2 over x squared, etc. But then we can apply our quotient rule. So the limit of the quotient equals the quotient of the two limits. Uh, then all limits exist, so we can apply the sum rule. So here we apply the quotient rule. Then we can apply the sum rule because limit x to infinity of 2 over x equals 0, etc. So what we are left with is, is only the 3 and the 5. So the limit equals 3 over 5. So this type of limit where you have a quotient of polynomials that's not so hard, you just divide by the highest power, and after that you can use all the limit rules you know. Then we have to uh, be a bit more careful in this one. x squared minus x. 
uh, okay, if we would just apply the sum rule, then something goes wrong because we get x squared uh, limit x to infinity of x squared minus limit x to infinity of x. So we get an infinity minus an infinity. But infinity is not a real number. We cannot compute something like infinity minus infinity. So this doesn't work. That's because the sum rule doesn't apply here. The sum rule only holds if both limits exist and uh, they do not exist, and that's why the sum rule doesn't hold. So what do we have to do? We have to write the x squared minus x as a x times x minus 1. And now we see what's going on. The x blows up, the x minus 1 blows up. So we have a product of two factors which both are blowing up. So we see that the limits, uh, the whole limit also blows up. So this limit equals infinity. Uh, and then fi uh, finally, an even nastier uh, infinity minus infinity. So this squared of x squared uh, plus 1 blows up and the minus x blows up as well. So what do we do? We multiply our function by its conjugate. So uh, the square root of x squared plus 1 plus x divided by the square root of x squared plus 1 plus x. So what happens then? The numerator stays as it is, and in the denominator we get we have something of the form a minus b times a plus b, so we get an a squared minus b squared, which gives an x squared plus 1 minus x squared, and you see the x squared and the minus x squared cancel out. And then we have re rewritten our limit in a nicer form. Now we have this one over here. And uh, now th th this one is a lot easier because we don't have our infinity minus infinity anymore. Uh, we see that the, uh, the denominator uh, blows up, so we have get a 1 over infinity limit equals 0. And you can show that a bit more precisely if you want, if you squeeze the, the function between 0, well, we have a square root of something plus x, so that's positive, so it's positive, bigger than 0, but also smaller than 1 over x. And if you take limit to infinity, 1 over x equals 0 in the limit. So uh, left-hand side also equals 0, obviously. So our full limit equals 0. So we see in many cases, limits at infinity are not so difficult. You only have to be really careful if you have get cases like infinity minus infinity or infinity divided by infinity. In those cases, you have to take a bit more care.